Nissan's Leaf hit worldwide sales of 10,000 last month, but one area that attracts a lot of interest online is its batteries. I'm with Nissan Corporate Vice President Simon Sproul to talk about the Leaf. Um, Simon, this is a, a Leaf uh, battery pack. Mm. Can you tell me but what's it going to look like in 10 years' time if I buy a Leaf today? Well, we, we think uh, the, the, the life of the whole battery for, for the car, we think, will, 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 will be good for at least 10 years. We think that most people are going to keep uh, a Leaf uh, for around about five years. And on that basis, uh, ba you know, using kind of what people would drive on an annual basis, which is typically you know, 12,000 plus miles a year, you're looking at a useful battery life of uh, at least 80%. Uh, after five years. Um, now there's been a lot of debate online also about the replacement cost of the battery and you know how much that's going to be and, and frankly it, it's very very unlikely that anyone's going to ever have to replace an entire battery pack. I mean you see the size of the thing if you if you need to replace that then you're in, in a whole lot of... Uh, a is, whole is, lot. Has that happened so far? Any no, no, no it hasn't and I think you know if you, if you really had a lot of damage to the battery pack it would mean a severe accident for the car. So typically what's going to happen is people are going to need to replace the modules and so, and we've got the ability, of course, to open up the battery pack and replace the modules. So we think that the, the durability of the, of the battery is uh, not going to be a weak point for the car. And in fact, the, the available amount of, of memory capacity of a battery after five years is still going to be 80%, so it's going to be pretty good. What about the cost for the replacement, even if it's just a, a module? Yeah, no, the, co the cost is good. For, we, 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 we're talking here, I mean, there's been a lot of chatter online about, you know, tens of thousands of, 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 of dollars or euros to replace a whole battery pack. Really, you want to focus on the modules, and the modules are going to be in the hundreds not the thousands of, of, uh, of, of, of euros or dollars because if there is going to be a failure it's more likely to be an in individual module again not the whole whole battery pack and again y if you compare to an internal combustion engine uh, it's very unlikely that if you had a failure on your on your engine after five years you're going to replace the whole engine mm -hmm. you're going to replace one part of it okay now, in terms of the, the uh, charging infrastructure, I mean, one of the issues that you often hear about as well is the ra famous range anxiety. Mm -hmm. And clearly that's still going to be an issue as long as the infrastructure isn't as good as it could be. What kind of progress are you making with that? Look, we've been working for three years before the launch of the car precisely to try and address the, 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 the charging infrastructure. And look, there are still uh, you know, large parts of, of the countries where we're selling Leaf where the infrastructure is not what it should be. But it's a classic chicken and egg. Unless you bring a product and you get people to buy it, then no one's going to install the infrastructure in order to, to provide uh, for, for, for those vehicles. So w now we've got the vehicles on the road, now people are buying them, now people are putting pressure on cities and states and governments and so forth for the charging infrastructure. Plus, as a business case to install it, we're starting to see the infrastructure build out. So we came first with the vehicle, uh, the infrastructure we now see uh, following uh, you know, fairly rapidly after that. I mean, when using the, the, the fast chargers where people will use when they're not charging at home, I mean, is that going to damage the batteries if they're used a lot over a long, long period? No, I mean, we think, you know, I even if you were to use your fast charger every day, which a lot of the internet uh, chatter is, you know, if you use it every day, you're going to completely wipe out the battery after three years. You've got to remember, if somebody uses the fast charging system, every day. That means they're, they're, they're driving about 200 miles a day, which on an annual basis is over 70,000 miles. There aren't many people on an average daily basis that drive 72,000 miles a year in any car. So it's an unlikely scenario that somebody is charging, fast charging every single day. What is the likely scenario is that, is that people are charging up using a slow charge or domestic charge overnight, topping up the battery, uh, and they're doing that on maybe two or three times a week or, or depending on the usage cycle. So we think that heavy kind of constant fast recharge cycle is, is the extreme. I mean, we engineer for the extremes, but the reality day to day is, is going to be nowhere near that. What, what about the cost of charging? I, I know overnight charging works out very, very well in comparison to using gasoline, but if you're charging during the day, it can be very expensive, typically, you know, two or, two, two or three times more. Um, is that a big problem? Well, look, I think we're, 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 what we're finding out from, from the real world data that we're getting is that people are tending to charge during the evening. They use the car during the day and then they charge up during the night. And sure, you know, I think there's, it's, it, you know, if you run your washing machine at night, you're going to pay less for the electricity than if you run it during the day. So I think consumers are used to the fact that power has uh, some, some elasticity in terms of its pricing. And so you simply, you know, you, 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 you met people, what we're seeing is people are managing their use of the leaf and their use of electricity around those, uh, those constraints. And um, finally, we mentioned that the LEAF has now hit 10,000 worldwide, but obviously the, the long-term goal is a lot more than that. 
Um, but price may be still an issue for a lot of consumers, with it typically being maybe you know, up to double the price of a regular gasoline car of a similar size in a lot of markets. What progress are we making towards the, the long-term pricing coming down? Well, the, the, the bottom line behind the whole electric vehicle push with, 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 with Nissan and, and with, with our alliance partner Renault is scale. So, and let, you know, electric vehicles have always traditionally been very expensive. And, and in fact, the main part of the cost is, is here in the battery. What we're trying to do is, by scale, by getting a lot of vehicles out there, is you reduce the cost over time of the batteries. Now, we're seeing that, that, that a lot of cities and states and governments are putting incentives in the market to help the early adopters, to help people initially get into the vehicles. But our business model is based on lowering the price of the vehicle, lowering the cost of the battery, and assuming that there will not be long-term government incentives in, in, in the marketplace. So we think that, that, that scale, ultimately, is going to drive the, uh, the price down of, of both the battery and, of, of course, the whole electric vehicle.